time, money, and health. Basic desires, I assume? Well, it seems that that's not the case for 75% of commuters in Honolulu. Um, I, um, at least that's from my point of view. But I could be wrong, of course, because I don't live in Honolulu. And I've never lived in Honolulu. Uh, in fact, I come from a very, very rural town on Maui called Makawao, where the only time the traffic stops is when we have the Paniolo Parade. <laughs> now, as you can imagine, growing up in this kind of rural town of Makarao, uh, one would long for some action, some excitement. So I decided when I was going to graduate from high school, I would get off the rock in search of some culture, some city life, and lots of snow. <laughs> Never had that. So um, I decided to go to Colorado. And uh, thanks to my incredible SAT scores, I was able to get into UNC. <laughs> That's incredibly low SATs, that is, in Greeley, Colorado, the University of Northern Colorado. They, they let everyone in. <clears throat> so, <laughs> true. Now, if, if, if you knew Greeley, Colorado, and I can see some of you do, you would have warned me in advance, dude, just stay in Makawao. <laughs> there, there is no city life. Uh, there was no skiing. You couldn't even see the Rocky Mountains from the campus. And to make matters worse, the, the, the meatpacking plant was right next door to the campus. Oh, how nuts. So I transferred out of there after a year, went to Oregon, uh, much better, but still very rural, managed to graduate without causing too much damage, and, uh, but still longing for that city life. So I decided to go to the densest place I could get to, and that was Tokyo, Japan. Now, if you guys know about Japan, this is what it is, right? The landmass is equivalent to the state of Montana, with half the population of the United States all living inside, <laughs> right? The city of Tokyo, not, not much larger than Honolulu, had 30 million people, plus tourists, right? So, <clears throat> um, oops, sorry. So, <laughs> the, the lifestyle I had living in Tokyo and, uh, and then again in Seattle, I've picked up a few pointers because how does traffic and things like that move in a city like Tokyo? It actually moves surprisingly smoothly. Now, today I live in a, another rural place. I live in Kona. And Kona is a place where the color blue, we don't even know what that means anymore, thanks to the VOG. You guys are familiar with the VOG, right? Occasionally we send some to you. It, you know, it's nothing but gray. You can't even see the horizon. And um, all of our million-dollar views have become million-peso views now. <laughs> but every time I come to Honolulu and visit, like I do here, I'm, I always believe that Honolulu is the best city. You guys have it lucky. Look what you guys have. <laughs> come and spend some time in Kona, and you will fully appreciate life in Honolulu. <laughs> Blue skies, rainbows... White sand beaches, you know, we only got black lava. Oh, and of course, restaurants that open past 9 p.m. <laughs> what a convenience. Honolulu is, you guys are like as close to a perfect city as I can think about. Except there is one problem, and that is you guys are number one. Number one in the amount of time you spend sitting in traffic. The data is all out there. Forget LA, forget San Francisco, forget New York City. <laughs> really, Honolulu, you spend more time actually sitting in traffic. But we're all part of the problem as well when we get in the car. It's not that we're stuck in traffic, we are the traffic, right? <laughs> now, this is not the kind of city that you want Right? This is not what you want to see, especially visitors who come over here. Surely, if there was an easier way for you to get from home to your office, you would give up your cars, wouldn't you? Surely. Yeah. Well, there actually is. There's a way. Um, for example, take what this guy does here. You just fly to work. <laughs> uh, I think he's in the audience. Hank Rogers, he's the one who owns that beautiful car outside. 
And that car can fly too. But, and he's my master, by the way. He has taught me the skills of flying to work. Uh, it, it's, very, it's very tough to learn. It, it did take a long time, maybe 12, maybe 13 minutes. But it did work. It does work. <laughs> so here's the thing. 75%, oh, and Timber, you must like my meditative state there in the air there, right? <laughs> Wherever you are. 75% of commuters on the roads in Honolulu are driving alone, single occupancy. Maybe there's something about carrying air, I don't know. But, um, and the thing is, for you car owners, you're actually only using your car 8% of the time. So the other 90%, the car is usually parked, not being very productive at all. And to make sure that there are places to hold those parked cars, well, they even wrote a song about that, <laughs> right? There really is no reason why Honolulu shouldn't be the number one alternative transportation place in the world. Yeah. Really yeah. I've been to Copenhagen, I've been to Portland. These are great biking meccas. There's no reason why a place like Copenhagen, very cold, icy, or rainy Portland should become biking meccas. And even if, though, if it does rain, the, bi the bus will be around to take you around as well. Okay. Um, now, can you imagine what happens if we take, for example, 40 people who are driving in single occupancy vehicles and get them to ride either the bus or a bicycle? How much space would save on the road? Well, this is how much we'd save on the road. But really, it's not that easy, apparently, getting people out of their cars. <laughs> Pretty tough. Thousands of people every day in Honolulu spend enormous amounts of time in an almost torturous experience getting to work. What motivates these people to do that? <laughs> I'm missing something here. Is there some orgasmic stimulation that happens when you're sitting in traffic? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't happen to me. <clears throat> so... Um, <laughs> Imagine now if there was a platform to actually reward you for doing everything you do every day today, but without your car. This is what Decongest Honolulu is about. It's a network or mesh of people, commuters, shops, restaurants, car sharing, etc., all working together to provide the tools and incentives to decongest the roads of Honolulu. And decongesting the roads and this whole process, there's a lot more benefits beyond just saving the roads. Let's take biking, for example, bicycling. I'm sure a few of you folks in the room bicycle to work. Yes. Yes. And the, <laughs> who said yes there? I'm sure that biking to work makes you so energetic that you just do so well at work. Right now, October 13th, right this moment, like 11 o'clock, in Kona, there is a test going on right now. 3,000 bicyclists are riding from Kona to Havi and back, a total of 112 miles. And these bicyclists, when they get back biking 112 miles, they feel so energized, they all, 100% of them, decide to run a full marathon. <laughs> True, happening right now. <laughs> Can you imagine the productivity of Honolulu if everybody bicycled to work? <laughs> be crazy. Be run, people be running all over the place. Now, not all of you can ride a bicycle. Maybe you're not physically fit. There are motorized versions. Right outside there on the foyer, I noticed there were some e-bikes as well. Motorized versions. One of the uh, motorized uh, electric bicycles that I've come to love is this one here. It's a hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle. I love this one here because the, it's fuel, it's got a long range, it, you can swap out the cartridges very quickly and you make it all with just a little bit of electricity and water. So a one kilowatt photovoltaic array and water makes your hydrogen stored safely in these little canisters that plug into the back of the scooter, taking the scooter 50 miles. Very, very convenient. Now, some of us still prefer riding around on 
four-wheeled vehicles. You know, maybe you don't want to get your hair messed up or something like that. I know how that is. And so there are shared ride vehicles as well, like there's the bus or there's van pool, right? We share all the time, just like we're sharing this room. You, you had no choice on who you were sitting next to. We share space at, at the stadium, at, the, um, at restaurants, etc. One of the things that we're trying to do with Decongest Honolulu is do a fundamental shift in how we approach our relationships around sh transportation and make it pleasurable and also almost irresistible. One of the Decongest Honolulu partners is doing a project called Shaka Ride. Getting ready to start up anyway. This is like the ultimate in transportation. You come out of your home, you hop on Shaka Ride, you open up your laptop, and you're basically in a shared office space. Wi-Fi, coffee, there's going to be a printer as well. You may like it so much, you may never ever want to get off. <laughs> and I spoke to the guy who's starting it up, Camille, he said that on the way back home after work, the coffee changes to yet another beverage. <laughs> You'll never want, I'm never going to get off that thing. Now, of course, Sometimes you need to have your own vehicle because you want privacy and things like that. I know there's some young folks in the audience, sure, in your courting years, you need some privacy, you know, got to make out and stuff like that, right? Uh, well, there's an app for that too. There's, an, there's always an app for everything. Our friends over here at, started up a, a, a project called Transportant. Think of this as like the smart grid for the road. When the roads are congested, congested, you're, you're advised, thanks to real-time data, of getting off the road and patronizing some businesses that support good causes. Then when the roads clear up, we recommend you go back on the road, just like that. Can be all managed very well. <clears throat> and why do it alone? As a video I think is going to play shows how important carpooling is as well. It's more fun to carpool anyway. And the other thing that's showing up more and more are peer-to-peer -peer share ride. That way, if you need to get your own car for just a moment, there's always going to be one in the neighborhood. In fact, these days, people are making $200 to $700 every month just lending their cars to their neighbors. It's great. So this is the social mesh network of Decongest Honolulu. Good citizens of Honolulu all working together to provide the tools and incentives to decongest the roads. So upon closing, just a couple of requests. If you're a commuter, try riding a share ride vehicle or give it a shot on two wheels. If you're a business owner looking for more customers, how about offering up some incentives to folks using alternative vehicles and join us for a smooth ride. Mahalo!